Hey, welcome back. I know it's been like four months since I posted a video. And if you haven't seen that trial video I just posted, I spent like at least like a hundred hours editing because I'm just very slow. But please check that out if you haven't seen it already. I spent a lot of time on it. I think it's like my favorite video I've made so far. And yeah, let's get this day started. Oh, do I have a meeting right now? Hey Google, what time is it? It's 12.35 PM. Oh my, dude, I had a meeting at 12.30. Be right back. Hey, oh my god, I'm so sorry. My alarm didn't go off for some reason, and this will never happen again. I'm so sorry. I know today's my day off. Gotcha. Okay, jokes aside, I got Friday off today, and we're taking the next two weeks for PTO, so I'm gonna be able to make more videos for you guys. It's a lot of life updates, a lot of things going on. I traveled a little bit, went back home twice, and I also went to LA for Thanksgiving, which is really fun. Not a life update, but a work from home office station update. I got a new desk, and as you can tell, we got an up button right here, so. Not that I actually stand up, because I, I just sit down every day. I need to make use of this. But, so I got a new desk, and I awfully placed it next to my bed. So, you know, if I do wake up late, actually, and I have a meeting in, like, five minutes, it's easy to go from here to there. And then, let's say I finish my code, I'm waiting for it to deploy or something like that. It's easy to go back from here to there. And also, thanks so much to Corology for sponsoring today's video. And I'll talk about them more later today. Okay. Fridge update. I have to eat more healthy now because as you might have seen in my previous videos, I did gain a lot of weight. And funny story, so when I went back home the first time in August, I haven't weighed myself in a while and I knew I gained weight because, you know, it's like quarantine. I'm not really exercising and stuff. So before quarantine, I was like 164 pounds. And then, you know, I went back home. My dad was like, you know, you should check the scale, see how much you weigh. I'm like, maybe at worst case, I gained like 10 pounds. So I'll be like 170 something. And so I step on the scale and it's a digital one. So, you know, like the numbers are like loading like one digit by one digit i see one like of course and i see eight instead of seven i'm like oh f it wasn't too bad though it was 182 and i was like jesus christ edward you gained 18 pounds in like what's more August? five months i'm like bruh this is so bad so you know ever since that i brought the skill back to here to my apartment from texas to sf and yeah we've been trying to eat healthy i've lost 10 of the pounds so far so i'm still up eight pounds from my original weight before quarantine but we're working on it that's why my fridge I'm trying to make it a little bit more healthy you know rice this is the steak i need to grab out actually that i'm cooking shout outs to with the market next to my apartment we're at 25 dollars per pound. If I went to Costco, it'd be like half the price. And then lemons. This is a half I haven't used. We want some cucumber. And then I really like grape tomatoes, so I'm gonna grab a couple of those right over here. And then most importantly, spring mix. And yeah, the main way I've been trying to cut or like lose weight is I just don't eat carbs. I just drink coffee later in the afternoon so I don't feel hungry. It kind of works. Maybe I can lose more weight faster if I starve myself, but I'm not trying to do that, so yeah. Salad's done. And look at this meat, though. Ooh. And here's a better close-up of the steak salad. So usually during lunch, I just watch shows, watch YouTube. If I'm really busy with work, I'll do some work with today's PTO. And some shows I've been watching recently are just finished, because I know a lot of you guys have been commenting on the anime I've been watching, so I don't only watch anime, you know? So for K-dramas, I just finished Startup, which is like a Korean Silicon Valley show where they, you know, they're trying to make a company, like IPO, like engineers. And you know, I'm a fucking CS nerd, so you know, when they had that code on that screen during the show, you know I paused it and looked at it and made sure it was legit, so. It was pretty accurate, but I really like the show. Also, Susie's like my bias, kind of. All the K-dramas I've watched this year for quarantine. So, Crash Landing on You, everyone's watched that. So, Itaewon Class, World of the Married, that, that show was crazy. And then, what is the zombie K-drama? I can't think of it right now. Oh, Kingdom. I watched Kingdom, and then I also watched... It's like, I think it's called Something in the Rain. It's the same actress as the one in Crash Landing on You. That was really good. And then the final one was My Mister with IU. And then for anime, so Haikyuu, of course, because the fourth season's out right now. Jujutsu Kaisen. I started watching Hunter x Hunter because I actually never started that series, and I'm like halfway done through it now. It's going to take a while. That's about it, I think. I haven't been watching too much. So let me try some of the steak. So the important things about steak, gotta get that crust, you know? And then we got a perfect medium rare, cause that's the best way to eat steak. Don't ever eat it well done. I swear to God, with A1 sauce, don't talk to me. Let's see how this tastes. Mmm. 
I think that $25 per pound might be kind of worth it. That's really juicy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm going to finish eating this really quick because I, I just want to enjoy my meal. I'll be right back. So done with my food. Just changed as you can tell. And I want to talk to you guys a little bit about, if you didn't know, I sent my lease and I negotiated, was able to get the price down. And I also started doing Invisalign, which is like, you know, kind of like braces where you fix your teeth. And I was able to save a lot of money just through personal finance stuff that I have from working full time at a company. And let me go into more detail about that. But let's first get some coffee because I need my caffeine. Also, if you're ever in the area, coffee chains in San Francisco, I would definitely suggest our blue bottle coffee. It's like Kevin Durant's favorite chain, apparently. Also, Phil's coffee, which I know is an awesome SoCal. Probably the best coffee from a chain I've ever had. And then the drinks I get there are the Mocha Tesoro or Mocha Tesoro. I don't know how you pronounce it. And also the Mint Mojito. That stuff's actually bomb. I would definitely suggest it. But I'm a simple man. So today, and as usual, I went to Starbucks. I loaded up on the app. And usually what I get is either uh, ice, I don't know if it'll focus, but either ice cafe Americano or my favorite drink, which is more like a treat. It's a Starbucks double shot on ice. It's kind of just like they mix espresso shots with ice and poured over with their syrup. And I add in a little bit of milk. So then it's basically like a fancy latte. I'm gonna go get that really quick and I'll be right back. Apartment negotiations. If you didn't already know, I initially did a six month lease from March of this year to September of this year because back in February when I signed, the United States wasn't closed yet because of coronavirus. I didn't know that I could just stay home and work from home. Did that six month lease at the time, that was a good price considering it was in San Francisco. But when it was near the end of August or the middle of August, when I had to think about, oh, do I need to move to a different apartment? Should I renew my lease with this apartment or should I just move back home and not be in San Francisco at all? There are a lot of things to think about. And the biggest thing of course was like, how much am I gonna pay? In the beginning of August, my apartment, they sent me like a renewal offer where they're saying, oh, if you renew your lease, we'll give you the same price that you're currently paying. I was like, bro, I'm not paying the same price right now because if you didn't already know, in major cities like New York City, San Francisco, Seattle, rent prices are going down like crazy because a lot of people are moving out because they don't need to live in the city. In my mind, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is ridiculous. I'm not gonna pay the same price as I am right now. And of course, I can't just say that to them. So what I did was I went through all the other competing apartments websites to see what units they had available because these apartments are in a similar area and they have the same amenities, like the square footage is around the same, the view of the city is the same. So these apartments are all like in this little area of San Francisco. I went through all the prices. I could tell that, you know, the market's a lot lower because from the apartment's view, even if they lease to you at a much lower price where they're losing money, it's still better than losing all the money of the unit if no one's renting it, right? So I went through that and I compiled a list of all the competitors and the prices that they're currently leasing their apartments for, which was much less than the renewal offer I had. So I sent them that email saying like, oh, I'd love to continue living here in my current studio. I really like the location. I really like people who work here, but I think it's a little unreasonable that you're charging me this price. Whereas if you look at these apartments nearby, the current market price for a student's SF is like this. So when I sent that, you know, you got to word it really nicely. You can't be super aggressive because they don't want to deal with you, right? If you're being mean. So they sent me a new offer and it's literally like a thousand dollars less per month. So saving a lot of money from that. And for me, I wanted to still live by myself and not be in back home in Texas because the biggest thing was actually a lot of my friends moved into the Bay actually. And also there's a time zone difference two hours from Texas and California. So I'd be working from like 11 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. So I don't really have time to do anything. And also I don't have to pack up everything and move everything to a storage unit or to a new apartment unit. So it was the best option for me. So yeah, I guess my takeaway would just be when you start paying for things, when you start buying like really expensive stuff, negotiations always on the table. Like the easy example is when you buy a car at a dealership, of course, you're gonna have to bargain with the salesman for quite a bit to get them to lower the price. Plus you buy a Tesla where it's just a fixed price and you buy it online, which I plan to do soon. And the second thing I wanted to tell you guys about. So in the previous one, I was talking about how I like, you know, save some money. In this story, I save some money and also lose some money. So hopefully you learned the lesson that I learned when I tell you about the money I lost. So, you know, when you start work, you get insurance, company gives you health insurance, dental insurance, vision insurance. And for me, I don't know if you ever noticed, but I had a tooth on the bottom row of my teeth that sticks out a lot. I had braces when I was a kid in middle school, but you know, being a dumb middle schooler after my braces, I didn't really wear my retainers too much. And then my wisdom teeth came in and like pushed out my teeth. So like my bottom tooth basically got fucked. And I've been a little bit self-conscious about it, but I didn't want my parents to pay for my Invisalign. So I waited until I started working and I could use my insurance I got from work to cover a bit of my Invisalign. Okay, so let's say my Invisalign costs this amount and then my insurance cuts off like $1,000 to $2,000 off. For me, it was like, I still had like $2,500 left to pay because my total was like 4,500 or something. So $2,500 is a lot of money. And like, I could take that on my debit account, but like, I'm not trying to pay that much at once, right? So the cool thing about all the companies is there's a thing called the HSA, which is 
there's a health savings account where it's similar to a 401k where it's a pre-tax contribution. So before you get taxed on a certain amount, you can contribute to your health savings account. And then for any health related costs, like if you go to CVS to pick up something from the pharmacy, if you go get your teeth done, like for Invisalign, you can use your money from your HSA to pay for that. For me, that was really useful because for my company, when I contribute money to the HSA, my company also matches that to a certain amount. And for mine, they contribute $750. So from that 2,500, my company already just paid 750. So how much do I have left? I have 1750 left. I also chose an option where instead of paying it all at once, I did monthly installments. So for each month, I was paying like 400 something for four months. And then for each of my paychecks, so I get two paychecks per month. Each paycheck, I contribute like 180 or something to my HSA, I think. And then so for each month, I contribute 360 to my HSA, right? So then if I pay these monthly installments where it's $400 each, and I'm also contributing to my HSA for $360 of that month, then out of pocket for my bank account, I'm only paying $40 a month. So this saved me a lot of money. But on the flip side, this is where I fucked up this year with my dental insurance. So I didn't get my teeth cleaned, right? But normally for me, when I was in college, every time I fly back home for winter break or spring break, that's when like my, my mom would set up a dentist appointment for me to get my teeth cleaned. I was under my parents' insurance, dental insurance, because I think you can do it up to like a certain age. So I never really had any experience setting up my own dentist appointment and doing some teeth cleaning. So you know me, like a typical millennial, what do you do? I went on Yelp and just looked for like best teeth cleaning like in San Francisco, right? So of course I choose the one that's like almost five stars, has a lot of great reviews, so I go there. And then when I walk in, I talk to the person in the front desk, like, oh, hi, I have a teeth cleaning for Edward. And she's like, okay, well, let me just print out, you know, all the forms and like things you have to fill out and also the receipt of how much it costs. I get the receipt and I look at it and it says $480. I'm like, huh? I'm thinking like, oh, should I just walk out? Like, there's no way it's gonna cost me almost $500 to like clean my teeth. So I'm like standing there being an idiot. I'm just like, Edward, you're already here. Let's just take the L, right? So I took the L, got my teeth cleaned by this really great dentist though. Like he taught me a lot of things. Like he was telling me how I was brushing my teeth wrong. Really great teeth cleaning. If I was super rich, I would definitely pay for it all the time. But you know, I just started to work. So I'm not trying to lose $500. But then when I finished paying the, I don't know what you call them, like front desk lady. She's like, oh, your dental insurance will send you a paycheck for your reimbursement in the mail sometime later. So don't worry about it. So I'm like, oh, okay. I pay $500 now and then my insurance covers me. I go on my insurance website and like the numbers are all scrunched all over. And it looks like I still have to pay $500. So I'm like, what the hell? But then I checked my mail and then my insurance sent me back $330 for like my teeth cleaning. I was like, oh, okay, that's nice. So I only ended up paying $150 for my teeth cleaning. But then my dad came in clutch. He somehow managed to do some mumbo jumbo stuff with my old insurance and they basically covered the rest of the $150. So I ended up paying $0 for my teeth cleaning, which was good. But the lesson here is that I did not know about this, but my dad told me about it. When you have insurance, there's a thing called in-network and out-network. So in-network is like a network of doctors or dentists or whatever you're trying to go to that work with your insurance company so that insurance company make sure that they can only charge like a certain price. So like these are all the reasonable prices. Whereas if you go to out of network doctor or dentist, they basically aren't like under any liability with your insurance provider of like how much they can charge. So like they could just charge you whatever you want and however much your insurance covers is all you can cover. If they said, oh, your teeth cleaning costs a thousand dollars, you can't really do much. Whereas if you're an in-network, if the dentist person tries to charge you a thousand, your insurance company is going to be like, no, if they're in-network, they have to like be within this range. So that was a really important lesson I learned because in the future, let's say for example, I get surgery or if I do some like expensive procedure and I'm out network, holy. F it's a good thing that this was only like a simple teeth cleaning and it was still $500, but lesson learned. If you just start working and get insurance, make sure that your provider is in effort. Duty calls. <clears throat> Okay, done with that gaming session, just showered. And before we continue the night, I just wanted to thank Corology for making this video possible. So I've worked with Corology before. I've been on it for around six months now, and it's really helped a lot with my skin. So for Corology, you can get your first month free. All you have to do is pay shipping and handling, which is only $4.95 for your first month. Just make sure to use my link down below and you'll be able to get that deal. And how Corology works is that you get one-on-one -on -one consultation with the provider. You basically upload your pictures of like your side profile, your front profile onto your account on Corology's website. That way you can monitor, you know, how well your skin's getting better and then like if you need to make any adjustments to your Corology formula and so once you sign up for your first month you'll be getting a box like this and if I open it you'll get a nice pack like this and inside this pack we have there will be three items so for skincare it's really important to cleanse first which is just like get rid of all the debris and things like that so Corology provides you with a cleanser and it also provides you with a moisturizer because you always need to moisturize your skin especially during the dry winters here and finally my favorite thing about Corology is that you get your own customized form formula as we can see here 
So when you sign up for your account, you fill out a survey talking about your skin type, what you're trying to achieve, what type of acne do you have. And once you fill that out, your provider gives you that custom formula. And all you have to do is just every day at night, put on a little bit. I usually just put it on where I have some acne and it helps a lot by the next day. The cool thing about Crology though is that they actually have two new products now. So the first product that I want to talk about is Crology's emergency spot patches. Let's say you have like a pimple coming out, right? And you maybe you have a date the next day. Maybe you have to take photos the next day. You feel that pimple coming out at night. All you have to do is, let me open it for you guys really quick. You'll get a number of patches, see these circles. And all you have to do is rip one off and put it on that pimple. And overnight, it'll suck out some of the puss and other debris that you don't want. It'll make your pimple look a lot better the next day. And the next new item that Crology has come out with that I really appreciate is acne body wash. If you have you know, chest acne, back acne, butt acne, is that a thing? When you shower, put this on, clean it up, and it'll definitely help you out with that. If you're interested, definitely click my link down below. That's how you'll be able to get the deal. And I can personally attest, it's a great product. I've been using it since basically quarantine started, and it's definitely helped out a lot with my skin. So once again, thank you so much to Crology for partnering with me on this video. All right, so for the rest of the night, I'm just gonna be playing some League with my friends, even though I just played some Warzone with some of my other friends too. I'm just trying to game as much as I can before I leave, all right? And I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you like this format, where it's just like a daily vlog. I add in a random tidbit or section of like me giving some advice or like lessons I've learned throughout this year. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of the night or wonderful rest of the day whenever you're watching this. This year has been tough, but 2021 is coming soon. Vaccine's out. Hopefully next year will be a lot better. Knock on wood and, and I'll see you for the next video. Peace.